Hey everybody, Kendall with Black Ovis. I'm here in our showroom, Salt Lake City, Utah. And we're gonna talking about the starting lineup. Starting five, I might throw in a sixth man because everybody needs a sixth man. But I wanted to, to mention that my starting five or my starting lineup is a little different than our top sellers. We sell gobs and gobs of crispy boots. Crispy is our, our number one boot brand. Top sellers for Black Ovis are Nevada Non, not, the Nevada Non Insulated, Altitude Laponia 2, which is interesting because we haven't had a ton of inventory and Crispy hasn't had a ton of inventory of Laponia 2. Monaco, very surprising. And that's, that's this version of Monaco versus the Monaco Premium, which I'll talk about a little later. The Nevada Regular, the Guide, and Tiva Mid, and rounding out eight, the top eight, would be the Kenai, which is a non-insulated full grain uh, exclusive to Black Ovis. So those are the top sellers for, for Black Ovis. And if you're kind of wondering where the trend goes, that's where the trend goes as far as the boots that we sell. Now for my starting lineup, the top, my favorite kind of rounded out top five. And I'm fortunate and all of you guys here have multiple pairs of boots. I have multiple pairs of boots. And that's one of the benefits of working here at Black Ovis. So introducing my starting lineup. I've got the Nevada, so you can't go home. You can't, you can't go anywhere without Nevada. Uh, Laponia, I've got Colorado, Altitude, and Wild Rock. So let's go over why I chose each one of these as my starting lineup. And, in, and, and two of these boots are kind of do everything or do most anything boots. And three are really more for niche purposes, um, but you can stretch those. So let's start right here in Nevada. Nevada is just the go-to eight inch uh, Nubuck leather. This is the non-insulated version. The insulated version are, I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference on your foot. If you're in a market or, uh, excuse me, if you're in a geographic area where it's a little warmer or you're running a little bit earlier in the season or your feet just roll like wicked hot, go for the non-insulated. I run the regular, uh, just a slight, lightly insulated version. Absolutely love the Nevada. It's, it's just bomber, reliable. I'm never going to be failed uh, or let down by the Nevada. And it's one that you could literally run for an entire season, barring those that, that early, you know, here in Utah, August hunts. But outside of that, for second week of September through the end of the year, running different socks and gaiters, Nevada is, is definitely a go-to. I would look at the Nevada as like my strong forward, if that was really my lineup. Uh, second boot that I want to talk about was the Colorado. The Colorado is another boot. My two boot quiver consists of the Colorado and the Nevada. If I had to, if I had to select two boots that I was going to run for an entire season, this would, this would be my combination. The Colorado is a suede leather synthetic combination. It's, it's just an amazing boot as far as comfort, durability. It has the ABSS, which is the added ankle, ankle bone support system. The lacing goes a little bit farther down the toe than, than the Nevada. I just absolutely love this boot because I can edge really well. It breathes exceptionally well. So this is my go-to for those early, this a little bit earlier season. Steep terrain definitely doesn't shy away from steep terrain. The Colorado is, is, is my, uh, my number two. This is, this is my, my weak forward, if you will, uh, or, or weak side forward. Um, next boot is the Laponia. Laponia is my point guard. This thing just brings it up the court, sneaky, sneaky, very fast. It's extremely lightweight, flexes very easy. It's a two flex, um, leather on the upper, leather, uh, excuse me, polyurethane coated leather rand, which is different than the rubber rand on the Nevada. Um, the Laponia 2 is just, I mean, you can run in, the, you can run a 5K in this thing. The sole looks like more of a running shape than a boot shape. The tread depth isn't quite as deep. Um, if you're looking for a boot that will absolutely stand up to basically any condition, uh, we're talking wet or dry, I'm not talking like six feet of snow, um, the Laponia is, is just amazing. And if, you want to, if you're really kind of a trail runner kind of guy and you want a lightweight boot, uh, but you don't want to be in a shoe, the Laponia is your jam. And this is, this is just, this is a fan favorite. It's kind of a Colt boot. More and more people are trying it out. And we're talking, I'm talking not just West, Southwest. Uh, Midwest into the east, um, the Laponia is getting a bigger fan base than it's ever had before. 
My point guard definitely bringing the ball up the court. That thing is, uh, you can stock like a ninja. You can take it off, and like I said, you can run a 5K. Altitude, this is my other guard. This is a, a lightweight boot. It just came out this year. I was a little hesitant on it. I wasn't, wasn't quite sold on it. I think it was because of the shaping. Crispy went back and created a little bit more toe, toe uh, width in the, in the toe box. The, the altitude is a really interesting combination between a polyurethane, uh, dual density polyurethane midsole, a full depth boot sole, but you have the upper that breathes exceptionally well through the tongue. It's lightweight, it flexes pretty good. It's a three flex. Not doesn't have added ankle support, so it's got a lot of give and movement to the upper, but still you know you're in a boot. Uh, I had a buddy that took this boot, uh, my hunting partner, we went to the high country in uh, Colorado, 10 days, I was running Laponia, he was running Altitude, which is interesting because he's always been that trail running type shoe, ultra lightweight. The one comment he had after that hunt was he was amazed at how well this was cushioned as far as, it, like we're talking you know, impact, uh, you know, breaking down the impact of a heavy pack. We were running, you know, base camp and then spike camp. And, and it was interesting to hear his feedback. He still felt like he could feel the mountain. He wasn't in too much of a boot, but surprised at how well after the hunt, he wasn't having like knee or hip or back kind of ailments, uh, because of the heavy loads we were packing back and forth. So the altitude is a really interesting boot and it makes my starting lineup because it's so versatile. And it's still, for a big guy like me, 6'4", 195, running a 50, 60 pound pack, um, I know I'm gonna get the cushion in that midsole. So it's very interesting, that difference between my point guard and my, uh, my other guard in the altitude. Rounding out my starting lineup is the Wild Rock. This is a specific use boot. It's full grain leather, uh, uh, 10 inch boot. I run the 400 gram. I've also run the 800 gram for like Midwest and uh, an east uh, tree stand and saddle hunting when it's not just wicked, wicked cold. But this boot, I recently took it on a cow elk hunt up in Idaho. It's about 15 to 20 degrees all day. We're running through 10 inches of snow. I didn't even run gaiters. I didn't feel like I needed to because my pants also came down pretty low. But the Wild Rock is just stout, extremely comfortable, extra warmth. This is my center. It's the go-to for those cold after kind of late season hunts or after the main like rut, if you will, September, you know, first bit of October. The Wild Rock is a pretty interesting boot. It, it pales in sales on Black Ovis to the Guide, and I think the Guide is a little bit more of a versatile all-rounder if you like a 10-inch boot, but the Wild Rock for me is that late season boot, and I'm fortunate, again, like I said, to have multiple boots from the Crispy lineup. The one thing I was gonna share is if I had a sixth man, it's gotta be the Monaco Premium. Uh, a lot of guys run or ask, you know, ask us like, what, what can I run just for, just for hiking around or everyday use? Monaco, Monaco Premium are the go-to. Uh, these boots in, in are, are same upper or similar upper. You've got a little bit different hardware in the Monaco Premium than you do in the, in the Monaco Standard. I do think that the Monaco Standard versus the Premium is a little, little more comfortable. And that really comes because the sole on the Monaco is the uh, a little bit better or softer rubber where the sole in the Monaco Premium is more of a harder rubber um, and it's not quite as absorbent of like in, or just you know everyday use. I wear the Monaco Premium for I mean I got them on today. I've pre I think I've worn this every single day this week. It's really my October to May everyday everyday boot and then I switch over to Atiba Mid. But this would be my six man on my starting lineup because it's just, I love to have a crispy on my, on my feet every single day. So hopefully this has been interesting. It's, uh, it's always curious, you know, it's always interesting to hear what other people are running, why they're running. Um, that's my starting lineup. If you've got a, a boot or two or three uh, of the crispy lineup that you're running or that you want to run, leave a comment below. We'd love to hear what your starting lineup would be if you had to choose five uh, and what you're currently running and why. So. Appreciate you checking in. Look forward to the next video.